according to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, torturers must never be allowed to get away with their crimes, and systems that enable torture should be dismantled or transformed. Nigeria, a nation with rich cultural heritage and diverse population, faces a grave human rights crisis. The Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman and Degrading Treatment or Punishment CART, explicitly prohibits the use of torture. However, reports from Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch and other organizations suggest that torture is alarmingly prevalent in Nigeria. We hear the harrowing stories of torture survivors whose lives have been forever scarred by unimaginable pain. My madam called the SS people to, to come and arrest me. The madam called the SS people. So when they came, they did not even ask what happened. They just arrested me. I was beaten in her office. They put broom on my private part. I was wet, I was wet and tortured. They took me from center area to Katampe one and put me inside one of uh, one one container container I was there for one night. The people claim to be DSS. They wear marks on their faces. I cannot recognize them. It was only their their boss, which was justice. I can recognize him. But the four men covered their face with face marks, so I cannot recognize them. I was tortured a lot. The next day they took me to one police station. The person did not say this case is not DSS case. They should take me back to our hotel. They took me back to our hotel before they, they now call police, call police to come and arrest me at central position. So when they get me arrested, the way those people torture me, police can't put me inside cell. I was taken to police hospital Gariki, area one, where I was treated. Because of my body was somehow, my body was not looking good. So police now arrested me, they took me to the hospital, gave me treatment, drugs before I was, before I'm not getting myself. They used like knife, they used dry wood, rubber, some even used a leather. They used a leather, put fire on it, so the elector was dropping, the, the light was dropping on my body. I have, I have uh, the wound here itself, I cannot go again. I have the, I have the wound here on my lap here, on my tummy here. The wound are here, the thing cannot go again. That was a leather fire and they used electric shock again on my body. They were on that thing and put my body. My, my body would start sparking. Police collected my fingerprint, everything. That was December. See, today, no update from them. Nothing from them to know whether what was going on was in me or not. And, 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 and the person that stole the money covered his face with a mask. The Nigerian government has taken steps to address the issue of torture by enacting the Anti-Torture Act in 2017, which aligns with the provision of the cards. However, implementation and enforcement remain major challenges. Life cannot be meaningful to anybody unless it is free of torture. And torture, most times, it is the instrument of governments. Some agencies of government. Torture is from the state level to individuals that are weak. So, CAT is Committee Against Torture, a body of experts constituted in order to oversee that. They monitor and ensure that state organs are not used to the advantage of the weak citizens. That is to say, international institutions try to see that states conform with anti-torture principles. The problem we have is that in its implementation, Nigeria has not lived up to expectations of those of us who rejoiced when the law was passed. Because till date, and we're talking of a period of about six years after the passage of the law, not a single person has been tried, I mean, arranged, tried, or prosecuted, or uh, uh, punished under the Anti-Torture Act. Yet, we are all aware that torture continues 
to be a tool in the hands of law enforcement agents. And of course, it is the reason you had uprisings like the uh, NSAS protest of the, to the year 2020. And really, if you ask me, you still see complaints, particularly if you're on social media, you still see these complaints on a daily basis. Sometimes we even see videos of pure uh, acts of uh, brutality on the part of law enforcement officers. It therefore shows that beyond these legislative measures that have been put in place, there is need for more to be done. Officially, the National Committee Against Torture was first constituted in Nigeria in 2009. Unfortunately, that committee was unable to achieve so much because it comprised mainly private persons and um, did not take into consideration the peculiarities of the issue it was to deal with, which is to prevent cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment in uh, closed spaces and detention centers, which meant that there had to be strategic engagement with law enforcement personnel. So it didn't take into consideration the fact that the law enforcement agencies themselves who probably might be those involved in um, using torture, uh, should have been members of the committee, should have been taken along, and that there was uh, a need to also try to infuse anti-torture into their training curriculum. That was never taken into consideration. Consequently, that committee was unable to achieve much. Now, in 2022, we thought to reconstitute the committee with a peculiar focus on strategic engagement with law enforcement agencies. And um, I think this is, uh, the reality is this is a the composition is wide now. We have civil society organizations, we have law enforcement agencies, we have the ministry, we have the National Human Rights Commission, and all that stakeholders who have interest or whose areas of focus is in preventing torture. Perpetrators of torture often act with impunity, evading accountability for their heinous acts. Torture survivors face long-lasting physical and psychological consequences. Proper rehabilitation and support are crucial for their recovery. So when you are now asking, why are those who are the perpetrators of torture still going on doing this when we already have these provisions? In fact, the Anti-Torture Act of 2017 it talks about 25 years imprisonment. That's what is that? Even says that if the person dies in the process, you will be sentenced, you know, you will have the same sanction, you know, that you have granted. I remember, you know, that Nigeria itself, itself is still practicing the death penalty that for the fact that there is currently that in the of the So that's to tell you the weight that this issue is supposed to attract. So why are they still doing it? They are doing it one because a lot of people who should be deterred by the provisions of that law are not even aware that that law is. And that was why, for example, Prabhat then translated the, the Anti-Torture Act of 2017 into different languages. So we have the Yoruba, perhaps uh, uh, Pidgin English, Igbo. But it's important that it's not just about translating this, that we need to find a way of popularizing, serializing these, these provisions in such a way that people will understand it, they will know it. And again, integrated into the training curriculum of the law enforcement agencies. What will deter people from committing offenses is when they know that if they do commit that offense, eh, they will be caught. They will, if they are certain, as a matter of fact, I have come to realize that the certainty of being apprehended when there is a violation, even outweighs the quantum of the sanction. So you may have an offense that attracts a very large sanction. But people see it as something that if they commit it, nobody's going to catch them. They will continue to do it. But when everyone who indeed commits act of torture, human and degrading treatment, is taken away. And they know that the moment they do it, they are taken away. And have you ever wondered why is it in some jurisdictions that they are putting body cam? Cameras, that's body cameras, so that if you are prosecuting or aggressing or doing anything, it's recording. So whatever way you treated that person is recorded. The same, this was also the reason that the um, Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015 talks about recording when, you know, you are giving your confessional statement or, you, you know, being able to clearly capture what is happening. 
when and even when you have been in the Torah. So it's no longer, it's, it should not be able to say that, oh, in this police station, we don't have a, a recording device, even your phone. Can you even make it in such a way that even a phone? Section 14 of Anchor's Act 2019. 8 ABC. Subsection 8 ABC. He made this copious recommendation that no person, no inmate to be tortured shall be tortured. No inmate shall be tortured. Shall. That's one. He said, no, two. Be part of it. He said, no inmate should be treated with the degrading and the human treatment. So is it in, 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 in obedience to these laws that those that act was saying? And if you go to all Nigerian Correctional Service Act, you will not see anything like torture them from A to Z of that act. Because anybody torturing is now on his own. Therefore, the thing has helped us in a way to model up, model our, our, our target, redirect our activities. And again, the, the, the fact that CG, the Controller General of Nigerian Correctional Service, I live in Nababa, FIC, MC, MOFR, MNI, has designated an officer, not below the rank of a controller, to be in the committee against that person, which means we wholeheartedly imbibed the doctrine of anti torture catechism. Um, legal practitioners and other uh, legal uh, 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 pro bono legal services providers make it easy for them to support the persons who complain of having been tortured by uh, getting the attorney general to um, uh, uh, approve the rules, implementing rules and regulations for the Anti-Torture Act, which will guide the implementation of the act. It is also important that we speak about the judiciary. Quite a lot, a lot of our judges are traditional in nature. It is important that you know um, uh, capacity building uh, uh, events are organized for the judiciary to you know create uh, 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 to broaden the mindsets and broaden the world view of our judges so that they will start identifying red flags of torture. I think that the civil society should do a little bit more. Twenty sixth of June of every year is the United Nations Day in celebration of victims of torture. Oh, this day. Yes, for years we've been doing that and you know celebrating, bringing to the fore the fact that torture should be stopped. Saying that we should move to a world without torture, we should be able to encourage movement of many persons and from various sectors to join their hands to say no to torture and to say that indeed those who are victims should be provided adequate care. Many of these victims do not have the voice to speak. We have washed their voices. Oh, many of them are living in the shadows. We have not done enough to bring their pain to the light, black light. And I think that this is what we need to do more. We need to begin to see commitment from government at all levels in terms of budgetary allocation to deal with the issue of treatment of torture survivors. We have Obviously, Nigeria has achieved some positive milestones in terms of its obligations under CART and UPCART, and especially in the raising of awareness and sensitization of stakeholders and enactment of laws on anti-torture. However, much is expected in terms of ensuring the effective implementation of these laws and especially compliance with the recommendations to the country. Why are we not going to have opportunity to have a database, a centralized database that clearly tells us everyone who is in a place of detention at any given time. You know, at the moment, there is nothing like that. So what that means is that it's difficult to hold agencies that keep persons in detention properly, uh, properly you know, have them properly oversighted. So it's one is to be able to make known these places of detention and to make them accessible. They should be accessible to every agency. For example, they should be accessible to the National Committee Against Torture. They should be accessible to the Human Rights Commission and the staff of the Human Rights Commission 
also has been designated as the national preventive mechanism for Nigeria. They should be accessible to the officers of the Legal Aid Council as also, of course, provided under the Legal Aid Council Act of 2011. It's not only that, you have mechanisms whereby organizations such as the Nigerian Bar Association, like civil society organization and all that, which are even provided within Article um, 21 and 22 of the Nigerian Correctional Service Act of 20. But the question is that, are these places, all of their offices and centers, detention centers, are they known? Are they accessible? Because at the moment, we probably know only the all of the correctional service facilities, the 244 of them, we all know them. But that's not the only places where people are detained in Nigeria. But there's also something else, having tamper-proof registers. Is it possible that we can have a way of knowing that everybody that enters a police cell is clogged in? And it is not a question of writing on a sheet of paper, it's a question of having a, a register that cannot be tampered proof with tamper proof. So even if it is in the next five years, I want to know whether on a particular day, five years ago, whether Mr. A or Mr. B was in a particular police station, I should be able to know that information. So I will also recommend the capacities of the members of the National Committee Against Torture and capacities of, you know, all of the agencies that are relevant here should be built. Also, the other thing that makes it work is that they need to be clearly appropriate independence. And part of what I see as pure independence is also about funding. When funds are independent, you are able to assess independent funds and enough funds to enable you effectively implement the mandate. But it's also about compliance. So for example, if you look at the United Nations Convention Against Torture, Crane, Human and Degraded, talks about the obligation of the state parties to report. You know, it was such a shame the last time when Nigeria was due for reporting at the Committee Against Torture that we, as the state, we did not have a report. It was very shameful. The international community plays a vital role in addressing torture in Nigeria by leveraging diplomatic pressure and providing support we can foster change. The time has come for us to unite our voices and demand an end to torture in Nigeria. Let us stand together in solidarity with the survivors, the organizations working tirelessly to end torture and the Nigerian people who deserve a future free from the specter of pain and suffering. I came into office in 2018, one of the first things I did was to um, set up a panel of inquiry, a public hearing, so that people could come and lodge their complaints on issues of torture, issues of inhuman and degrading treatment, issues of violence against them, resulting from the operations of law enforcement agents, insurgency and so on and so forth and a large number of Nigerians came out. Uh, one of the things I'd like Nigerians to know is that there are two institutions now dealing with issues of torture in Nigeria. There is National Committee Against Torture which is the federal government's response to issue of torture. There is also the National Referral Mechanism which has been created now under the National Human Rights Commission and that if there are issues related to torture, they can report to any of these two bodies for investigation and redress. And that um, we are open to provide all kinds of support, including psychological and psychosocial support to victims of torture, which is part of our obligations under the convention. And that uh, people should ensure to report cases of torture, because even if you are in contact or in conflict with the law, you are entitled to the dignity of your person and so you shouldn't be subjected to inhumane or degrading treatment simply because you have some contact as i said with the law in our hands lies the power to make a difference let us raise awareness support organizations combating torture and put pressure on the nigerian government 
to fulfill its obligations under the CART. Together, we can ensure that the silent screams of torture victims are heard and a brighter, more compassionate Nigeria emerges.